It is time for another viewer match, and what I got for you today is a Zerk vs. Zerk on Proxima Station. Spotting in the bottom left corner, we have none other than the Red Zerk player. Currently in Gold League, he is known as Matchy Man. Love that nickname, not gonna lie. And his opponent spawning all the way on the other end of the map, playing in blue, playing with the blue drones right now. He is known as the Silver League Zerk, going by the nickname of Slavaver. Slavaver? I think I'm gonna go ahead and call him Slavaver for the remainder of this match. Now, let's be honest, right? Zerk vs. Zerk may very well be the most difficult and most technical matchup in all of StarCraft 2. I mean, in most of the lower league uh, Zerk vs. Zerk games that I've seen, there's a bit of a Zerkling massacre going on. Because with one, you know, what one properly placed Baneling, you can accidentally end up killing all of your opponent's Zerklings. And with a little bit of Miss Micro, you can easily end up losing the game. Now, on that note, um, I'm trying to ask you to please be positive in the comments down below. I mean, in some of the uh, previous matches that I have ended up casting, I tried my very best to remove some of the worst comments. Because so, some people have, like, a tendency to post some really mean things about the players that are being casted. Now, I'm sure that some of you uh, may definitely be of a higher caliber than the ones that I am casting right here. That is all fine and dandy. If you have any criticism of my own cast, right, I am definitely interested in those. Definitely uh, feel free to post those down below. But in the previous videos that I have uh, posted, um, you know, viewer games of, I, I really ended up removing quite a lot of comments because some people just really posted some really nasty things. Now, if you see someone uh, post some nasty things, definitely go ahead and report that comment as well. Nowadays, there are a lot of uh, comments going up on the YouTube channel, and while I'm trying to keep everything as positive as can be, uh, and while I definitely do welcome criticism to myself, please keep in mind that the players in this match have submitted their own replays, or at the very least one player in this match has submitted his own replay. Um, and, um, you know, of course, he's gonna be watching this video as well, right? So please, please be nice to other people. I mean, <laughs> it's sort of like a basic human skill, right, at this point. I mean, let's, let's just be nice to others and let's just have some fun, okay? Now, like I said, this is ZVZ, right? I am expecting a, a Zerkling massacre here. We'll see exactly what is happening right here so far. So far, though, both players are opening up actually pretty standard here. We see that quick hatchery uh, going for the in-base expansions because, of course, this is one of the new maps uh, where, indeed, there is, uh, you know, quite a lot of room for easy expanding. There's also a quite an easy uh, third base right here at the front. And we'll see what both players got in store for us today. Both of them playing very, very standard so far. Matthew Man also going for that quick expansion right now on the low ground. And it looks like he's going to be following that up with a bailing nest very, very shortly after. Now, by the way, if you got yourself a crazy match as well, definitely go ahead and submit those. Um, do keep in mind that we do receive quite a lot of replays nowadays, but if you are interested and you've got an absolutely wild game that you played yourself, feel free to post that at replays at loco.tv. And Motlessis has been really great at, like, you know, having a look at all of the replays and selecting the wildest matches for me. Uh, please keep in mind, though, that we do receive quite a few, so, you know, it's, it's not like I can actually go ahead and cast every single one of them. Uh, but regardless, by the way, pro tip on this map, send your overlords along this ledge here instead. This ledge is great because you can still have a look at your opponent's natural and you can actually keep your overlords safe. Looks like we've got a bit of Zerkling aggression coming in right from the beginning of the match here. Uh, trying to do some fancy micro here uh, is the matchy man. He's trying his very best to connect with all of these Zerklings. Accidentally ended up killing one of his own drones almost? Oh, that Zerkling or those Zerklings actually ended up nearly killing a single one of those drones here. But it looks like the matchy man has managed to keep everything alive for the time being. No workers have indeed gone down, and I was just gonna say, I wonder what he's got in store for us here, because he's got a very quick lair coming up, and then the double evolution chamber as well. Could this be some quick roach play? I guess we'll figure that out in just a little bit. Slavaver on the other end, though, does have himself a baning nest coming in, as well as an evolution chamber. Uh, he may very well be able to go for that quick plus one melee upgrade, which is also very powerful uh, in the Zerg versus Zerg matchup. But regardless, I wonder what Matchy Man's got in store here. Still seeing only a single gas geyser, so he can't really use that lair for a whole lot of things, and I'm also not quite seeing a, a roach warren or anything just yet coming out. So it looks like it looks like these uh, Slavaver Zerklings have had some dancing lessons here, trying to dance at the top of the ramp. They actually get a beautiful surround there. Uh, all, a lot of these opposing Zerklings as well, and they all get picked up, going back to that dancing lessons, dancing the tango, but eventually they're gonna make their way across the map. Now one sneaky little Zerkling hanging out here at the extractor will be able to scout out uh, that there is no third base just yet. Beautiful scout there, and actually having some solid overload position as well, um, you know, after losing that first one, I suppose. But he will be able to spot this incoming aggression with relative ease, but it looks like Matchy Man has already got himself a whole lot of banes ready to go. Will we see a Zerkling Massacre? Yep. 
yep, yep, no, that that was <laughs> that most definitely was the first Zorkling massacre of the day. That was, you know, one of the most typical things, I guess, that we do generally see in the lower league Zerk versus Zerk. Not keeping an eye out on those Zerklings. Now, the lair has finished up. The plus one melee upgrade actually is coming in. Second evolution chamber not being used just yet. And eventually, Matthew Man will be adding an arm, or will be adding on a few more extractors right here. And now he's also getting himself another expansion. Slavaver on the other end got himself that second gas much, uh, gas much faster, rather, uh, but he's also getting himself a lair right now, too. One thing to keep in mind is that both players are already banking over four digits when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, you know, getting the mineral income. And of course, this really all comes down to neither of them really having enough larva. Generally speaking, if you are struggling with spending your resources in Zerk versus Zerk or any matchups where you play a lot of Zerklings, you simply gotta keep in mind that Zerk has a third resource that is called Larva. Now, apparently, Sylvaber has spotted in uh, all of the Zerklings that are coming in. He's morphing in about a gazillion Banelings, actually 15 going down right now. Target firing, however, by Matchy Man. He's wasting a lot of the Zerklings' time, and here we go. Banelings are finished up. Second Zerkling Massacre. Does that count as the third one? I'm not entirely sure, but all of the links do indeed end up falling and Slavaver does keep that third base alive at the very least for right now. In the meantime, he's finished up his own lair. He's getting himself no additional tech or gas income just yet. I wonder what he's got in store for us here today. But eventually, we do see that tech of choice here from Matthew Man as he get is getting himself uh, both the Spire as well as the Centrifugal Hooks upgrade, which is the mailing speed, and then as well, plus one, plus two in these evo chambers so he's going really heavy into the ground melee upgrades i wonder what he's got in store for us uh with those and what he's really planning to use those uh those those upgrades for i mean the zerklings will definitely become more powerful but if he keeps throwing them away like he has been doing in his match so far these zerklings are going to be extremely tricky to control now he doesn't have a whole lot of gas income just yet we'll be able to start up some more extractors here if he so decides to in just a bit but it looks like he is going to plan on doing a little bit of aggression there are a lot of slavaver banelings however ready to defend at home already sitting at that third base he's getting himself his own spire now as well so we will indeed see some some zerkling versus zerkling battles into some um, Muta versus Muta battles very shortly, at least I assume. Where are these Zerklings headed? <gasps> no, 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 don't attack move, don't attack move the Banelings! Keep the Banelings on- Oh my god. You can't play with my feelings like that, Matthew, man. If you attack move on the rocks with all of those Banelings, they will indeed roll into the rocks. Just like that. But it looks like he's gonna go back into the aggression. Third Baneling Massacre, or Zerkling Massacre, rather. Oh my god, so many F of them end up falling. No, guys, no! Don't do this to me! I've played this game too much. You can't lose all of your Zerklings like that, please. <laughs> please don't do that. I made videos on control groups and hotkeys. I'll leave a good one down below in the comments or in the description of this video, rather, but... <sighs> Zerkling micro, man. It's difficult. Anyway, first Mutas are indeed on the way right now. Matchy Man is getting his own Mutas now. He will be able to start pressuring his opponent. There's very little anti-air uh, for Slavaver right now, other than a few of his own queens. Uh, but, of course, the... Overlords and whatnot are vulnerable. Third base is looking really vulnerable as well. Looks like Savaver has no idea of this Spire just yet. Has not spotted that yet, but he does know about the additional gases. So he may be getting himself a bit of a feel for the matchup now as well. But, of course, he's got his own Spire coming in here. And he does indeed, um, you know, get his Mutalisk now as well. So he will be able to defend here at the very least eventually. Matchy Man has got himself a bunch of Mutas here at the front. Not quite using them uh, effectively just yet. He will be able to start using those very shortly. But both players still banking up more and more resources. And really, once you get that Muta production out, right? And in particular, if you've got so much like research happening as well in the evo chambers and he's actually getting himself an infestation pit now as well you really just need all of the gas that you can get really try and get your hands on as much as you possibly can a quick tip for the muta versus muta battles uh the armor upgrade the carapace upgrade on mutas is incredible it will keep your mutas much more uh, alive as it does help against oh my god no, no, no. oh my no not again not again dude you got so many good upgrades you got so many good upgrades. Why do you have to? Okay, fine. It's okay. It's okay. The Mutas are eventually coming in. But anyways, the Carapace upgrade in Muta versus Muta battles is extremely valuable. It makes the Muta stay alive for significantly longer. Much better than the attack upgrade. But so many of these Mutas do indeed end up doing quite a lot of damage. I think that was a bit of a run by here as well. Potentially, I think that was the sound of a few Banelings doing some work there in the natural. 
uh, but not a whole lot of damage actually ended up going down. In total, though, 10 workers were killed by Matthew Men in this particular match, and Slavaver actually sending in Mutas one by one right now at all of these uh, opposing Mutalisk as well. Matthew Man having a se severe supply advantage here, and he's actually doing a lot of damage here with the Mutas. Queens standing out in their bases. They are extremely good at taking out these units as well, and slowly Matthew Man is getting himself a really nice lead. At the same time, uh, Slavaver is trying his very best to do some counter aggression. Will we see another massacre? Uh, Alright, that was a minor massacre. We'll call that a minor massacre. That's not what that's not how massacres work. But anyways, regardless, we do have that Muta versus Muta control going on now as well. They're trying their very best to keep everything running, but these drones, they're idling. Please get him back to work very shortly. Spark crawlers have finished up since. They will be able to start defending these bases against the onslaught of Mutas, but so far, Matchy Man is looking extremely solid. Now it looks like we do have finally a glimpse of his tech at, uh, at his tech of choice, rather. Still not having that Vespian Geyser in the main taken, but after getting the infestation pit, he's getting himself a hive. And considering he's got so many melee upgrades and ground upgrades here, I'm thinking here he may very well be going for Ultralisk. That would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. We'll see if he's uh, if he's exactly planning that. Uh, Slavaver on the other end, though, still just simply making as many Mutas as he possibly can. Really trying to up that Muta count right now. He's getting himself a ton more gas income if he would be sending the drones into the gas right now uh, at the third base as well. Not quite seeing those just yet, but it looks like he may very well be looking to send a ba Oh my god, he's going straight for the gold here as well. Pretty cheeky little move, but Matchy Man has been keeping an eye out on the minimap. He's cleaned up as many of the opposing overlords that he could find, and now indeed he's gonna have a look at his opponent's base as well. Now, you will realize here that there are quite a lot of mutas out for his opponent as well, and I don't know if he's gonna, like, come a swarm host? That has to be a misclick, right? That has to be a misclick. No, that has to be a misclick. Plus three, plus three will be going on right now as well. He's gonna be able to get himself uh, those really powerful upgrades. Those Zerklings on the ground are gonna be amazing, and there, indeed, we do see the Ultralist Cavern go down, as well as that single Swarm Host. I wonder what he's, what he's gonna be doing with that one, but regardless, that Ultralist Cavern with the proper upgraded Ultras, and plus three, plus three, it will become absolutely incredible. If he gets the Chitinous Plating as well, those Ultras will stay alive for forever. Now, Slavaver is just simply secure himself another base. He's not taking any unnecessary risks, just simply making himself as many units as he possibly can and slowly bringing down that count. He's getting himself a lot of queens as well, so he can actually uh, defend against the incoming mutas, but he has no clue of the opponent's main base just yet, and he doesn't know about the incoming ultras just yet. And the thing is, right, queens are pretty powerful. They can keep themselves alive for a while, but the ultralisk pincers will eventually end up taking everything out. Now, Matthew Man, having a relatively late fourth base there will have a pretty difficult time getting himself the income that he needs to properly produce ultras but this army that he's going for is going to be so much higher in tech that i'm actually did he actually what anyway it's going to be so much higher in tech that he's going to have such a powerful force here and i wonder if slavaver will have enough another bailing massacre coming in zerklings trying to run through their deaths to the best of their abilities looks like they managed to do so just yet and more and more bailing oh my god no bailings turn around turn around turn around turn around slavaver banes Oh, man. <laughs> so many of them could have died there. Anyway, there are a lot of Munas here in the air right now for Slavaver, but there are so many incoming army units here for Mechi Man. He's getting himself the Ultralisk now as well. That fort base is most definitely going to end up dying here. And while Slavaver is desperately adding on more Munas, I wonder if there is enough to eventually end up killing this. The fort base has been taken. He immediately decided to saturate the gases here as well. Uh, so that is going to be very helpful. Apparently 11 drones in that one gas geyser. But regardless, there are quite a lot of defensive Mutas out now for Slavaver. And while I don't think he's got any upgrades on those just yet. Oh my god, once again, a big bailing hit there. Um, but... While there are no upgrades on these Mutas, sometimes StarCraft 2 is just simply a numbers game, right? And here we go, they are going to be fighting right on top of each other. And if you have a look at the unit counts right now, look at that. There are only three and zero Mutas remaining right now for Matchy Man. And it looks like the Vapor has established himself a very solid amount. Now, of course, he does need to be careful, that is, because there are very few units here for Matchy Man to actually shoot up with. He actually should have just simply gone for the aggression. I mean, these Ultralisk are extremely well upgraded. They are at plus three right now. They're getting their Chitinous Plating as well, and these Mutas would take forever cleaning it up. It looks like a little bit of indecisiveness here from the Matchy Man is going to force him to get, once again, across the map. And actually, even though 
He has got such a huge army here, and he will be able to clean up a bunch of these bases with a few queen transfuses. Maybe no, the third base does end up falling. But the thing is, there are so many units now in the air for Sylvaver and very little anti-air for his opponent. And while these Ultras are surely well upgraded, and they will be able to take out these bases very, very rapidly, he does need to deal with the Mutas here eventually, right? Like, what is he going to do without the Mutas? Main base, though, does end up falling. The third base has gone down as well, and the Zorklings are going to be nibbling away at the last mining hatchery here. Slavaver is going to run out of income and resources here very, very shortly, because while he does start up another hatchery in the main, don't know if that's the best positioning. He is losing so much of his economy. Now, there are a few Mutas on the production now as well for Mechi Man. He's trying to get those up and running here, because the, the question is here, right? Will he have enough? To deal with his opponent's anti-air. He's not adding on any additional queens. I think Mechi Man with the 5,000 resources could definitely spare some additional queens because they are amazing. He's also not adding on any spore crawlers and the Mutas are making their way across the map right now. I mean, that is a very substantial amount of them. There's 29 moving across and they will be able to start cleaning up all of these bases with relative ease. Why are there no queens? Get your spore crawlers out. They're so extremely good at dealing with all of those Mutas. Ultra Cavern apparently top priority right now, even though Slave has got himself all of the anti-air that he needs or anti-groundwater that he needs to deal with him but here we go the opposing mutas are coming in the spire being target fired down and with that i think matching man will not be able to start continuing anything here he's getting spore crawlers in the third base eventually so he will be able to start getting some of those units out but the question is are there enough mutas i don't think there are he cleaned up all of the bases of his opponent while well, there is a gold base being rebuilt now as well there's no income here for Slavaver, though, but it looks like he just simply has too much. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Matchy Man killed all of the bases of his opponent. He just simply just barely had not enough to clean out all the last of the buildings. And Slavaver just secured himself an air advantage. What a crazy, crazy, crazy match. Zerk for the Zerk, man. It all just comes down to control. The player with the better control, generally speaking, ends up winning. But I guess, I guess if you have a, a Zerkling massacre on both ends, it could become a little bit more painful, regardless of the outcome. I hope you enjoyed watching this game. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now, once again, if you have a great replay that you want to go ahead and submit yourself, please only submit your best games to replays at loco.tv. Other than that, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, alright? And I will see you in the next one.